you read Isaiah chapter 11, there are seven spirits of God. It's one Holy Spirit. You know, God is three in one. He's also seven in one. Say with me, God is three in one. And he's also seven in one. Never forget that. The way we illustrate it, we, uh, we don't have this kind of decorations here, but uh, the one or two camp meetings when I, I wanted to teach on the tabernacle, they designed all those things in the tabernacle for us. And one of these days, we might repeat that. I remember one of those years, they actually built the seven lampstand. It's not seven lamps, or it's actually one lampstand. If you see it is one, it has one pipe, it has a base for where you connect the olive oil that flow into it. So this anointing that you're talking about flows into the lamp, but when you get to the top, you see that it branches into seven lights. Ah, as I'm even talking, you can show them what I'm saying. Yeah, so when Jesus came, they talked about him. You can start from verse 1. This prophecy given about Jesus, which is already... Um, he, he, he was fulfilled because his ministry, he functioned with complete anointing. Complete. In Dominion City, we always teach our pastors before we ordain them that there are seven major anointings that function here. So if you count those things on top, you see there are seven. One is in the middle, three on this side, three on this side. So that's how the Holy Spirit is. This is revelation of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you go and look at what exactly are each of these seven? Now, for example, uh, Isaiah chapter 11, you see, look at Jesus, who, who functioned in all of them. Start from verse 1. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. You know he came from the tribe of Judah. He was a naturally a descendant of David. David was the son of Jesse. Hmm? And then Jesus is called the seed of David. Okay, now, and a branch shall grow out of his root. Okay. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of understanding. The spirit of counsel. <laughs> Sometimes we call it the spirit of strategies. They are all different. They do different things. Now, um, this is the one I want to show you because I'm not teaching on this. Verse 3. Uh, the spirit of might. Look at it. Immediately after counsel, you meet the spirit of might. Now, that is the one that enables us to do the miraculous. And when you step into what this can do, there are about three dimensions of flow of just that one alone. You can be very tired, you can be weak, the spirit of mind hits you. That's what provides healing, that creates healing, this particular one. That's what creates miracles that pull people out of the way. So there are different anointings and you have to know which one is in operation. There are different anointings, there are seven anointings in the Bible. So when a particular anointing is not in operation and you try to do what that anointing does, you won't get the result that normally follow. You can only get the result of the particular unction that is functioning. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Now, but the beauty of Christianity is that as he is, so are we in this world. Jesus functioned in all of this. That's what, why I read verse 1. That branch that came out of the root of Jesse function in the seven spirits of God. You and I are also called to be complete in him. To be complete in him. We are called to function in his fullness. Then there's another one. I, I can see that today's Christianity is in a mess a lot of believers because of the absence of this one look at that one the spirit of the fear of the lord it's called the spirit of holiness this one you know the fear of god is defined twice in scripture first proverb defines it as the beginning of wisdom 
but the spirit of the fear of the lord is different from the spirit of wisdom you can actually have the spirit of wisdom and not have the spirit of the fear of the lord functioning the spirit of wisdom actually helps you to apply actually that one functions in application of knowledge for example you if you see somebody if you see a spirit of knowledge it can open you up to a lot of information help you understand um, lay hold of a lot of stuff but the one that has the spirit of wisdom actually produces results he produces things for example if you have that function in a business it will be the man that went to a business school and just acquired knowledge so look at the one this one is missing big time in the life of many believers today when you see the the decay in the moral values in our society which is also first coming from the church there are a lot of people who actually profess christianity and not living the life and then there are those who truly love god who go to church they really want to live that life in, the truth is that in their desire they really want to do it but in their experience they're always struggling and, and falling they have not truly learned that christian life is not live in the power of the flesh yes self-discipline self-resolution a decision to always do what is right is very important but it will only carry you so far there are certain areas where you will be able to use that to succeed and it will carry you so far but you see it yearly in the area of new year resolutions people make certain decisions and sometimes february has not even reached they've broken the rules or their resolutions there is an anointing there is a supernatural help that helps us to live this life this life is a supernatural life holy living in the midst of all this seduction of this age to live clean to live pure is there is a supernatural enablement to do that to stay all your life a man that fears god who is driven by that desire to please him there is a supernatural enablement to do it and this is the one because most of the time what is going on today is that when we pray for anointing the only anointing we seem to know is might you might have seen people doing miracles so you want healing anointing is one of the spirit of might you want miracle working power there are three gifts of the spirit that has to do with the power of god moving in in terms of manifestation there's one that is miracles there's one that is healing then there's one that is the gift of faith the gift of faith gives you ability to believe God at a, a dimension that is when it's functioning in me, it doesn't matter what it is that you bring before me. My normal sense that should doubt, because as a human being, they carry a crippled man before you. There is that thing. So, what does the gift of faith do? Normal things that frighten people or make people doubt. I will teach on the gifts of the Holy Spirit later and will impart it and then you see them manifest because I always do that once in a while. I think last year I probably did that. I'm not sure whether it's here or not. You know, um, and we see that happen. So you, you understand what I'm talking about. When it's in operation, doesn't, how can they tell him Lazarus is dead? He said, let's go that we might wake him up. It's the gift of faith in operation in his spirit. It's not the normal person. It's not the natural human being. That's why what normally happens to us, when the anointing lifts, we start wondering some of the testimony, the things that happen. You know, this thing is like God taking over a person. See the way I'm wearing this suit. It has shape. It has even taken the shape of my body. If I have more hips, now it will just have a little hip, the suit. But when you pull it off, and drop it it takes back the shape of cloth that's what happens when the holy spirit is functioning in a man you take on some of those characteristics you see things that your normal eyes can't see 
like remember that the other other gifts there that can show you things reveal things death is a spirit and if you understand that you know that he's not bigger he's just like any other demon the same way we cast out other demons demon of this demon of that you just cast it out but somebody said is that true yes i'm sure you've been reading the bible now that there is a spirit that passed through the land of egypt that night that took all the male children in Egypt. The Bible recorded it. And the children of Israel were told how to keep themselves protected. And what did they do? They put the blood. Everyone said the blood. The blood of the animal on their doors. Maybe I should even show you that because somebody doesn't know this. If somebody's dying around you. Don't start crying. Somebody there. What are some of those things they say on TV? Somebody help. Somebody help. And you're a Christian. Leave the unbelievers to do like that. Somebody help. Somebody help. What is the meaning of that? My Bible said the name of the Lord is what? A strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are safe. If you want to call on anything, call on the name of Jesus. He said... <laughs> whosoever call it on the name of the Lord shall be saved but call on that name with faith because faith unlocks the power you can call it and nothing is happening because you have not turned the switch of faith on the gen is on but the switch is off call on it and believe in what you're saying the, the righteous runs into it and they are saved so the name of the Lord is one of our place of safety that we run into the blood you know, and so on and so forth. Who knows what normally comes out of your mouth when they, you are surprised or when you are, you know, an emergency happens. Build it into your DNA. The name of Jesus is one of my place of defense strong tower I run into it and I'm safe I will show you one scripture go to Luke chapter 24 when Jesus rose from the dead he traveled to the on the road to a mouse and then he talked with those two disciples and as he was talking to them, they said, Did our heart not born within us why he expanded to us the scriptures? He shared a lot of things with them. It was a long journey. The Bible says, starting from the five books of Moses, the law, he went to the prophets, ended up in the Psalms, taught them all kinds of things concerning himself. But finally, they got to the city where they were going. See, see, see what they said. Did not our hearts bow within us while he talked with us while we are on the way when he opened to us the scriptures? But anyway, when they got to where they were going, they entered the house. Initially, he pretended, and the Lord does this a lot. When they got to the house where they were going, he pretended that he was going, that he didn't want to enter. So they begged him to come and spend the night with them. Let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit and something about Jesus. He comes by invitation. He goes by rejection. Even when he wants to come, he waits to see, will you invite him? Everyone lift one hand and say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Jesus, I honor you. I love you. You are welcome afresh into my life. In things of this life, if you don't acknowledge him, you won't see the help that he brings. You won't. Learn to do that. Learn to do that. They drew near to the village where they were going, and he made as though he would have gone further. As you have. And then the next verse said, But they constrained him. And the word constrained is to beg. Put pressure when you're begging a person, you're making change his mind. 
saying, please abide with us for his evening. The day is fast spent. And so he went in with them into the house. Now, this is Jesus after he rose from the dead. And these people are his disciples, two of them. And they didn't recognize him. But watch what happened. Two miracles happened when he went inside. And that's what is going to happen to us today as we come to the communion table. So I want to show you that. Number one, when they went inside, they now sat at the dining table to eat. And it came to pass as they sat at meat with them, as he sat at meat, he took bread and blessed it. Do you have any? No, I don't want to hold the bread, but okay, let me use this. He took bread. That's the first thing. Second thing, and he blessed it. Actually, some other translation will say, and he gave thanks. Third one, and he broke it. It's called the four order of breaking of bread. These are the four processes. Now, you can see my time is up, so I won't be able to explain this thing to you. That's what we're supposed to discuss today. And he broke it, which is the third stage, and then and he gave it. The day he fed 5,000 with five loaves, two fishes, that is the same order. He took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. The third stage happened in his hands. Then he gave it to his disciples to share. And everybody ate because the multiplication starts when the sharing begins. Why he is blessing it? Why he is giving thanks? Even when he broke it, you won't see anything grow. In supernatural, like in miracles, in ministering to the sick, the point of conversion, when what we've been talking about manifests physically, is the point of action. A lot of people don't know that. So, when he gave it to them, it was in the hands of the disciples why they were sharing it that the multiplication took place. Because you keep sharing and this bread is not finishing. You keep sharing and it's not finished. You keep sharing and it's not finishing. Anyway, um, I've seen this miracle of multiplication twice. Uh, I don't know again who and who was with us in that conference where the gentleman had his money multiplied for And I don't talk about it because I don't even understand it and I don't want to claim that God now can be multiplying money. I don't want to make such claim. I have enough wisdom not to do that. But it happened. The old man had some very serious problems, lost all his stuff and other. Because sometimes because of need, because of situations people find themselves in, God just intervened. Tomorrow now you might want him to go and do that. Like, okay, he divided the race, you drive your car, now you say, I'm traveling to U.S. Oh, yeah. But that time, it was a critical need, and those armies of Pharaoh would have killed them. But, okay, so he gave it. And the moment they took the bread, first miracle, their eyes opened. Oh, so I've been seeing somebody here. I've been looking at something. Do you know you can have a problem in your company and the solution is just there. But somehow it didn't your brain didn't click. Because most of the time we work with left brain. And left brain is for logic, for analysis, for all of that. But God gave us two sides of the brain. There is the right brain. That's where innovation, invention, creativity, that's the one that taps into revelation that sees the unseen. Is this side. Try this this night. When you go to sleep, hmm? sometimes you wake up in the night. Check the side you are lying. Change the side. If you are having a, a dream and the dream is halfway, if you go back to that side, stay quiet, take off, the dream will continue. If you turn to the other side, you will start playing another channel. This side is CNN. This side is movie channel. Maybe I should even tell you. Put your hands here. 
Do you know, even if it's meditation or scripture that you are studying, maybe you're just studying the word, eh? and a set of thoughts are going through your mind. If you lean your head, you just lean your head on a wall or maybe on your hand, those other thoughts will raise, a new set of thoughts will start. And you want to do the other one, it becomes a struggle. This one is for innovation. When you were a child, you used to see things. Some of you used to know things that will come to pass. If you want to know how I get word of knowledge, it's from this side. The antenna that hears God is here. This is the side you used to do faith. This side is logic. Okay, so that's seed. And then you are going to get, this side will kick in. Which, what is the connection between seed and making money? If I invest the money or I use it and buy goods and sell it, this logic is all sense. And the Bible says we walk not by sight, we walk by faith. Now, this is the part that hooks the supernatural. To be able to deal with a crippled man, this is the side. This is the side that gets revelation. So when he said, and their eyes was open, what happened is that God unlocked the eyes of understanding. Oh, yo, yo. They just ate the bread. Their eyes were open. What, 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 what? The second miracle is that they recognized him. At that moment, he vanished. He has worked with this guy for hours, teaching them. They didn't know who he was. Some of you, you sit in church year after year. There is a dimension of God you don't know. There is something about knowing God from hearsay. What my pastor said, what they told me. There is something about having a revelation of God. It means that you need right brain functions. Revelations flowing all the time. Uh, this aspect that enables you to commune with God. That's why some of us that don't understand that somebody's I heard from God. You start looking at them. You really hear from God. I taught my daughter some things about this. Because she used to, Daddy, you really hear from God. One day my daughter, she couldn't take it. He came and said, Daddy, so you actually hear from God. How do you do that? So I said, okay, I want you to know the school you are attending, when you were born, your right brain was functioning very well. But everything about education develops the left brain. So after years of developing it, you shut down this side. And you become so logical, so analytical, so sense-driven that you don't know God. But in organization, like in this competitive age in business, we need people who can come up with innovations, new ways of doing things, who can look at a business where everybody's offering this solution. And come. You know, Nigerians are copycats. One man said everybody rushes there. What about being the one that pioneers new? Is this side. When, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you partake of the, this, I'm sent by God to tell you this one. You see, this, you see what I've just done now. This prophetic side. I'm sent by God to tell you. There's a prophetic side to your life. Do you know, for example, me. Nobody dies in my whole extended family without me giving at least 12 months of information. And I will go and prepare them. As you partake of the communion today, that inner eyes will open. Amen. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Amen. There is a dimension to you. You are supernatural. You are supernatural in nature. You are not just a normal person. You are a child of God. You are carrying the Holy Spirit. And he's locked up inside you. He's not doing anything. No. No, the same Holy Spirit is what you have. The one I have is the same one you have. It's the same Spirit of Christ. But some of us have learned how to. Ah, I don't know, for example, for you, if you are in the entertainment industry, can you imagine coming up with another, if it's music, with something now that's going to rule the airways for the next 12 months? For God, there's endless streams of innovation. Endless streams of creativity. Endless streams. But beyond innovation, creativity that will help us succeed in life 
is also revelation of who he is after you take communion today because that's the message for today oh, the other ones on relationship with jara this is it even that bible you are reading when you read it it will start because there's a spirit behind the letter there's a letter but there's a spirit behind it it will start speaking it will open up it will start you start understanding things at a dimension you are not flowing anytime i start struggling with dullness of understanding i told my kids anytime if you are having problem with memory having problem with understanding having go for communion service that there are 12 major things the communion does go there and unlock that inner genius that is in you how can you be carrying the all wise god and be the all foolish child no way the all dull performer no way you're going to become the high performance in your industries the ones that see where you know trends are moving ahead of time that's one of the things i'm gifted with ahead of time see where the thing is going where the next set of profits will go and you will bring tremendous advantage to your company tremendous advantage to you that's the role that people like daniel and joseph played around pharaoh and nebuchadnezzar they use the power of right brain to guide them so the limit of left brain where natural eye stops you're able to see beyond that Father, we thank you. Just lift up your hands. I ask that operation of the seven spirits of God will fall upon everyone here. Spirit of wisdom and creativity and innovation. The spirit of understanding and revelation. The spirit of knowledge. The spirit of strategies and counsel. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. As they partake of the communion table today. Whatever it is, let the eyes open. Let the scales fall off for the eyes of everyone. There is somebody here, I'm told by the Lord, that you've been praying for a life partner. The guy has been around you. He loves you. You treat him like you're just my brother. You're just my friend. But that's the one I sent. And you are looking for the ones that will hurt you. The Lord said, your eyes need to open up. The treasure you are looking for is right beside you. Recognize it. Karebodos, Sodob, Bobosh. Hey, let that glory fall upon every eyes. Every limitation that is imposed by either lack of understanding or blindness or inability to see what needs to be seen or lack of perception or lack of vision. Let it be lifted here today. The eyes of a people will be open to opportunities, open to the next level, open to what they need to do. Let the spirit of counsel kick in, teaching them what to do. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide us into all truth. He will teach us what we need to know. We activate that here this morning. We bless you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name.